What is going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to do something that we should have done in the past uh, just to help us test out our game a little bit easier. It is something that is going to help with the flow and it is this thing actually. A simple death menu with a simple death animation. When we press and play we start over again. So again, uh, this is quite simple. It doesn't look good right now but that's not the point. The point is to, have sure, uh, is to make sure we have a flow. So guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so today's episode is all about um, creating the flow with this game. So when we die over here, we need to get an actual feedback. We need to be able to restart the game, we need to be able to do all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start by laying down a, uh, an actual piece of UI. Now the piece of menu is going to tell us what score we landed during this play session, how many tokens did we collect, and also how to go back to playing again. So I'm going to right click on canvas, create a new UI panel, and that UI panel is going to be the um, you now this is where you're going to be doing your def UI, you could call it. So, def menu. Now, um, for that def menu, I'll remove the image, I'll just keep that for the sizing. We want this to be taking the whole screen, right? Um, something I like to do with these is I like to create a image, just beneath that, call it fade, and make sure it matches the whole size of this thing, so... Something like that, it takes the whole size and then I put it on black, and go down on the alpha to say something like 50. So when we do die, we have this nice little layer of black that tells you stop focusing on the game and focus on the actual UI piece. I'm going to crank this up to say 100, and that's going to be our fade or, you know, transparent background. Um, next up, we're going to create another panel inside of here, and I really haven't designed that properly. Maybe we should spend a little bit more time deciding on, like, decide on where is going to be what, but uh, in this case, I'm going to keep it quite simple. I'm going to make sure I have something in the middle, um, maybe of that size. Is that too big? That is definitely too big. What about 150 in width? That's still too small. 200 by 200 could do the job. Now, inside of the menu, we are going to have some buttons. One for a retry and a, a bunch of other for things we don't have just yet, so we'll, things like look up the, the leaderboard, look up the achievement, look up the uh, your score against other people in your friend list, all that kind of stuff can be done uh, once we do have those features, but right now the only thing we really have is the retry, so I'll put retry button here, and um, retry might not be the best word, let's go for something like play instead, so play button, and we'll just leave it right there in the middle. Okay, so next up, what do we want to be doing with this? We want to be um, adding the score, of course. Now, I'm not going to be putting that in the menu, I'll put that just above the menu, that'll give it some kind of other style. But of course, this is something that you'll be doing on your own here, just deciding where your UI pieces are. It's the easiest thing you could be doing. So, in my case, gonna take my menu make that even smaller maybe 100 since we're not gonna have a lot of text for now we're not gonna have a lot of option we don't have a lot of feature in the game we can only play but we don't have any connectivity so what if we just bump this up to say font size 30 it's a little bit too much there now that could do and this would be the score so at all time this is gonna be the final score I call this one score. Let's duplicate it. Maybe bump this one up here. And that's going to be the amount of coins. So the amount of coins you gather. Maybe something like 10. Not so proud about the look of this thing right here, but of course we're just laying down uh, the essential right now. So once we have this, let's go down under the menu, play button. And under that play button, I'm going to make sure we had a new function, so on the unclick function. Unfortunately, we do not have that function just yet, so we'll have to go into Game Manager first. Now, when we head into the Game Manager, let's make sure we actually create a public function that we can click on from that button. So, I'll be putting it, say, um, at the very end, right here, so public void on play button. Now when we click on that button, the easiest thing we could do is simply call the Unity Engine um, Scene Management, 
scene manager load scene and load this one scene this one scene is called game so let's just do that of course um, it's not something I'm going to leave that there forever I'd like to actually create some kind of fade or animation when you die you know um, actually not when you die but when you click on play again maybe put a fade out on the screen and then head back to the menu um, but right now since we only want to make this work we're going to be hooking this very very simple function so let's go ahead and we're going to add to the onclick function down here let's click on plus drag and drop the game manager and where is he? it's right here on play button let's try and play this game now oh actually um, well it's already playing because it's already on top now if I press on this play button as you can tell we go back inside of the same scene and we can just start playing again bunch of things we need to do before we actually call it a day uh, first we need some kind of animation when this menu is supposed to happen we need some kind of well we need the actual real values at the top here instead of having some fake values and we also need to make sure it doesn't look that bad <laughs> all right all right so under our game manager what we're going to be doing right here is we are going to create another public function public void on def and on def is going to make sure the uh, the def menu pops so do we have a reference to the def menu we don't have a reference to the def menu right here but we're going to be creating a new one um, I'd like to go down here say def menu and we're doing we're gonna do a public animator def menu anim now you probably guess it we're not gonna be uh, just enabling a game object we're not gonna be changing a canvas group fade we are going to be animating this thing with actual real animations so I'm gonna be taking this one here and uh, whenever we do call on def we're gonna say def menu anim set trigger and we're gonna set trigger dead now we also gonna be setting the actual text values which we don't have down here so let's go up here say public text and we're gonna have the score text again and the coin text once more public text score text coin text oh okay so they're already taken right now this is why I can't use them um, we're gonna call them dead score text and dead coin text now these two dot text are going to be equal to score text to string and what is the other one it is the um, that coin text dot text is equal to coin text or sorry coin score to string I remember changing those earlier we had to give them specific in their to string function because they were too long so let's go see we actually used that for what was that that was a modifier we used this for the score and also that one for the coin so we'll be using that simple single digit to string all right um, what is the error here oh simple mistake this is not a score text it is the actual just score right um, so everything well not everything but these three line happens when we call on def this is something we need to call from the player because he kn he's the one that knows when he dies basically so let's go ahead and find this I believe we have to go inside of the player motor and I'll be looking it up through some other means right here player motor here is so there is a function called crash inside of the player motor .cs and it does an set trigger def on the actual player now we're gonna be calling um, game manager instance and we're gonna be calling what is the name of our function I am such <laughs> I'm forgetting quite a lot of things tonight I have a uh very short attention span I'm sorry about that <laughs> um, we're gonna be calling on def here just like this and we're, we actually replace the line right here we gotta make sure we set it back so on def we're gonna say is dead is now equal to true this is what we had earlier in the player motor and we just change it for on def instead so we trigger more than just telling game manager that the player is dead alright so let's give this a try see what happens actually nothing is going to happen I just realized well nothing different um, except that the text up here these two texts they should change but not in this case because I didn't set the reference 
All right, let's go and do this. So we have the dev menu. Let's open it up. We have the game manager selected. I will be drag and dropping score and also coin. Now in terms of the animator, we don't have it just yet. Let's go ahead and go under the dev menu. And can we actually add the animator on this thing? Yep, let's actually add the animator right here. Now back on the game manager, drag and drop the dev menu one more time in the animator field. Okay, I'll give this a quick try, see if we're um, see if the text actually changes. And it does, so we didn't collect any coins and we have a score of 4. Now it's time to actually animate this thing. So we're gonna bring out our, our sick animation skills, I know I'm pretty good at that. Um, bring down the window, animation window, you can do control 6 on the keyboard and I'm going to anchor it where my console is right now. We're going to be needing some animations, so uh, the convention I've been using thus far is the name of the animation and then underscore the name of whatever we're animating. So we're going to hit create and this is going to be the... Should we have one for idle? Mm, no, let's not use one for idle, so let's just say dead def menu. Now, um, at the very start, I'd like this to be in a completely different manner. <laughs> so I'm thinking about uh, having this a uh, the def menu can stay here. The fade, the the actual the actual alpha of the fade can be down to zero. So the fade can be on zero. Now um, for the menu, I'd like to move this whole thing, including the actual uh, score and coin. So I'll take these two. Let's actually put them as um, as childrens. So we have one big thing that we can control. Now I'd like to have this thing and maybe just like bump it up up here to say 400 and Y. And when we do animate in, we're just going to put them back where they were a second ago. So let's go ahead and um, go down here. We have the def menu animation. I'd like to start by pressing record and we're going to be adding um, a property. So that very first property is gonna be the alpha of this thing. Let's make sure we play around with it so it saves the keyframe and we're going to be putting it back on zero. Now in terms of the menu right here, same thing, I'll just move in Y, put it back on 400, and say after a full second, so about 60 frame, you can tell there is 60 frame right here, simple as that 60, plus it says one second. We can put that back in the center by just putting the position dot Y on zero. Also, Let's go back on the fade and bump this back up to say 800 or maybe even 150. If you want to be even more fancy than that, what you can do is actually make sure they don't happen at the same time. Maybe you can fade in first and then you're going to have it come down. So something like this, we fade in and then this comes down on top of it. So that's our def animation, something quite simple, the menu pops up and it just slides down. Alright, now let's go ahead and try this in the game, make sure we don't record anything else so we don't mess up the animation. I'll press play on this and hopefully it won't play automatically in loop like it's doing right now. Okay, so to fix this we are going to find our animation. It is down here in our project. Let's make sure we take these, put it back in here and we're going to be choosing our animation right here. Let's make sure we remove the loop time. And now when we go inside of the def menu, let's open this one up by double clicking on it. We are going to make sure that um, this is not called by default. So can we just create a empty state? I think we can. New state with nothing on it, so nothing happens. And then once we have the proper trigger, we can go ahead and go inside of the def menu. Now if I remember properly, the trigger was called dead, so I can go ahead and go under parameter, create a new trigger, call this one dead, and just put it on this arrow right here. Now I'm wondering if it is really the name I gave it, let's make sure it is the actual name I gave it. Um, set trigger, dead, here it is, alright. So technically everything should be working just fine, so let's play this game and make sure we run into this thing. 
we just play the dead menu like that. Now, um, might want to be changing the pacing of this, maybe the defaulting of the menu was a little bit too quick, so I'll just take this, put it at say 1 minute 30, just modify it a little bit, um, see how we can work with this. Yep, that's a little bit better. Now something that bothers me right now, even though well the menu is pretty it's pretty bad looking, uh, is the fact that these fonts we don't really see it with that color. So we'll be changing the color of this thing to a nice white. If we had under menu, coin, and score, we're going to be putting that on a white color. Both of them. All right. So let's play this. Let's see how it looks like gonna be collecting at least one coin then run into the wall it's a little bit better alright guys so we managed to get this flow rolling we can now die and start over again so this is the most important part I was kind of tired of trying this out on my device and having to boot the application over and over again so these days are done in the next few episodes we're going to be um, saving this data and also making sure we have a high score we're going to be saving that locally for now, eventually we're going to be moving this to the cloud, the Google Cloud. But um, for now we'll be saving locally and then we'll move on to just fixing the mess we've made by making the game not look so good. Um, at, at least not as good as it used to look. Hi guys, so thank you so much for watching. Click on the video on the screen to head to the next tutorial. And also make sure you check out the link in the description to help us make games like this and much more. Hi guys, I'll catch you in the next one.